Hi, welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Katie and in today's episode I'm going to be modifying a soldering aid to make it more useful. A little while ago I modified the basic idea of a soldering extractor to be automatic and to sense when it needed to turn itself on. This has proved to be really useful. Um, probably one of the most used makes, I think. It's made me think about other things that I could improve to make my day-to-day -day life in my workshop easier. Something most of us will have, unless you're super young with brilliant eyesight, is some sort of illuminated magnifying vision aid. So this is um, a headband that you can put on and it has illumination clip-on lenses to help you see what you're doing. This is all good but one thing I've noticed when I'm using it I'll quite often put the circuit diagram on my uh, little tablet screen in front of where I'm working so I can look at the schematic, see what I need to place next on my PCB. But the light reflects off that screen and makes it quite hard to see in certain places. You sort of have to angle yourself to where you're looking or you have to keep going, turn it off, turn it on turn it off, turn it on. It's not the end of the world, but it's just one of those little things that you think, could I make this easier for myself? In today's episode, I'm going to be modifying this to make the light turn on and off as and when I need it. So let's get started. My first step is to look at what I've got to work with. There's a push button to power it on and off and inside here there's the light unit it has a battery holder all built in so it'd be good to use that I won't have to make my own battery holder and make something that just works with those batteries and controls the light that's already there there's little point in inventing the wheel when it works fine already. The only thing I might have to consider is that there's not a great deal of space inside this unit already. It's made to come in and out but apart from enough slack to get to the batteries I don't really need to use this ever off. Um, I think you can use it as like a desk stood light unit. I've got plenty of lights uh, if I needed to do that. I'm not against making it fixed in the headband, at which point I could utilise this space either side. So I think I'll probably remove some of the plastic on these two edges and remove the plastic there and there. Um, and that gives me more room to play with, depending on what I'm going to do and what I need to fit inside. But there's the first idea. Having a think of how I'm going to solve this problem, like I usually do, I didn't think of the easiest solution first. I mean, why would you? My first thought was to have some sort of uh, distance sensor, time of flight sensor, to detect how far away the item you're looking at is, and then switch on the LED when it's close. So if I'm working on something, I'll be that far away, that measurement, turn the light on or closer, but my monitor would be that far away. So if it's looking that far to, or further, turn the light off. I think that's a really neat solution. Um, it means that the light would still come on if you're holding something up close, which would be handy. After thinking a bit more, I realised that the action I want is to be off when I'm looking up and on looking down. 
So with that sort of action, I could just use a tilt sensor to control the LED turning on or off. Now that's a much simpler solution. Why not give you guys the options? If you think you might just want it to be able to look down, there's the tilt sensor. If you think you want to be able to look at stuff illuminated but close whilst looking up, then there's the time of flight sensor. So I'm going to have a go at doing both solutions, um, comparing the two, and then I'll see which one I want to put in my visor magnifying glass. And you can decide which one you like best uh, and let me know over on the Element 14 community. I'd love to know whether you like the more complicated but more adjustable version or if you like the option that's just simple and probably going to be quite quick to do. So please let me know what you think. I'm going to get started testing out some circuit ideas, so let's have a look at that. So I'm going through the tilt switch circuit to begin with. So I've just boarded up um, this on the piece of breadboard. I've got this power supply here set for 4.2 volts to be my three AAA battery packs. And then all I'm doing is I've got the tilt switch between the power and the LED. And then when we're looking up, it's off when we're looking down it's on. This LED is red just to show for example. That's a really nice easy circuit. All I have to do is break out the wires for the power to the LED. Probably post the on off switch so I can turn it all off and I can turn it on but then that will enable the tilt detection. So now we can take a look at option two. So I've got this little Seed Studio microcontroller. Uh, I picked it just because it's um, one of the smallest I can get and I want it to be as compact as possible because I've not got much space to work with. So I've got that and then I'm connecting the time of flight sensor, just connected in the power and the I squared C to the I squared C of the microcontroller. And then the only other thing connected is this control line, which is going to the FET, which is going to turn on and off the LED. I've just got a random LED here, but this has got the FET, so it's all isolated. So I can just control the LED that's currently there with the circuit that it already has for power. Um, so that's how it's working. So if I turn it on, the LED's off, and as I go closer, the LED turns on. So I can be looking up at the screen and then look back down at my work and it'll turn on, off, on, off. So I'm really pleased with that. I'm going to get that um, put on this strip board so I can put it on the visor magnifying glass nice and easily. Now the other thing to have a look at is the code. This is really simple, there's not actually much to it so we're not going to go through it in much detail. Download the file, have a look at it, it's fairly self-explanatory. Uh, ask me in the Element 14 community if you've got any questions. Basically using the Adafruit library and setting up the output for the LED pin and then just measuring the range. If it's closer than 20 centimetres it's turning the LED on. If it's further away than 20 centimetres it turns it off and then it goes to sleep for 100 milliseconds ready to check again.
Are you an engineer, electronics hobbyist or maker? Join the Element 14 community, where you can learn about new products and technologies, see cool projects and connect directly with the people that make the products and engineers that use them. Join now! I've soldered up the strip board, I've got the microcontroller on there and this. I've made it so it sort of forms an L shape with the two PCBs, so it's sort of like a little box on top. Might make a little box enclosure to go over the top, but that will come later. Now, when I had it on the breadboard, I was using my adapter to power it off 3.3 volts just to check that it would power off the LiPo okay. Now it worked fine like that, but now it's actually on. The light is flickering. It's working fine when the distance is too far, it's off. And when something's close, it's on, but it's flickering. So obviously the comms is getting from the sensor and it's reading the distance correctly, but I'm not sure about this, the LED coming on and off. So let's have a look at it on the scope. So I'm gonna have a look at the power line because that's what the LED is connected to. Now I know that the micro is powering up right and the sensor because it's getting the distance correct. So I'm just gonna take a look at that. And now on the scope, I can see that sort of every 250 milliseconds there's just a tiny drop and now it's not very much a point of a volt about a quarter of a volt drop there um, and the time gap I would say indicates it's probably the checking of the sensor so I think the sensor doing its reading might just be pulling that power rail down enough that it's not stopping working but you can see it in the flicker of the led so i'm going to try putting a capacitor on there and just see if i can help smooth that sudden drain out um, so let's have a look and see how that goes so I've put the capacitor in the circuit um, across the voltage in and ground and now you can see when the LED is on there's still this about 250 millivolt drop. The only thing I've noticed is that when the LED is on it's about a fire 250 millivolt instead of being 500 millivolt drop and the whole voltage is dropping by about 750 millivolts. I'm gonna have to think some more about this. Whether I put in a bit of a more beefy capacitor, I think will be the next thing I'll try. So let's give that a go. Right, so I've been trying numerous things with this. Um, I put on more capacitance to see if I could smooth out the power line so the LED would stop flickering. That didn't help. I checked for shorts. I've fully recharged the LiPo battery, so it's now completely full and yet still flickering, if you can see that. I have to keep something in front of it. It works perfectly. Looking up, looking down. It's just that flicker. I don't know what else to try. Um, if you've got a suggestion for something I can try, please come over onto the Element 14 community and let me know because I'd really like to get this working. My current thoughts are there's um, some sort of chip hidden under black epoxy on the switch PCB. So either there's something in there because the power's coming through that from the battery so whether there's something in there that's limiting what's coming out to the LED that I'm sticking the circuit on, or possibly the battery can't supply enough current. So it looks when it's sensing. So I'm wondering if the current draw, when that's detecting because it's laser based, is just drawing too much and the battery's not able to cope with it. I'd hoped that the capacitor would fix that, but it doesn't seem to have. Um, 
So maybe a different battery or a different power source. If it was um, sort of AAA batteries, I suspect that might hold it up better, but this has got all the charge circuit and everything built in. So maybe that would be a better option. For now, option two in theory works, doesn't work with this setup. Option one would work perfectly. It's just a little less accurate. It's all about the positioning of where the visor would be on your face, where you're looking, setting the angle to make it turn on at the right point. I really like this option, but it's a bit glitchy. Please let me know if you know how to fix it. Now, my next step was that I was going to make an enclosure for this. It'd be really simple to 3D print a case that could just be sort of epoxied onto the top of that flat panel there. But another option, if you didn't have a 3D printer, I made a net of that shape on this piece of paper. And you could just cut that out onto card and stick it all together. There's a hole for the power wires and there's a little slot there for the sensor to be able to see out. Um, so that's another really nice option if you weren't able to 3D print or you just wanted to test something quite quickly and it could be cut out of paper or card or even sort of a thin cuttable, hand cuttable plastic like acetate or something. So that would be my enclosure design. But for now, have a closer look at this on here. And then, yeah, please let me know if you know something that might be worth trying to get this working properly. Overall, I'm quite pleased with how this project's gone. I like option two the best, although it's really annoying how it flickers, but it does illuminate. It brightens up what you're looking at. If you look at something further away, it stops. Look at the work again and it comes back on. It does what I set out to do. I do have a feeling that that flicker is probably caused something under that black epoxy blob on the PCB under the switch. There's something in there that's just limiting the current that can come through. Maybe taking out that switch and replacing it with um, just a normal switch that's actually on and off physically rather than a momentary switch with uh, some sort of controller underneath would actually fix that. But there's always option one that's super straightforward, just putting that tilt switch uh, to the power to the LED and then just lining it up inside the case so that it's off when you look up and on when you look down. And that would sort it out. It would still work perfectly fine as well. I've got my uh, modified improved magnification glasses now, and I've got my modified soldering extractor fan. Have you got any ideas of any other tools that I could improve? Uh, make day-to-day -day life easier. Let me know over on the Element 14 community what you think I should do next. But for now, that's all. So I'll see you next time. Bye.